Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us for this episode eight of Education Connection. My name is Laurel Burns and I'm your host for this evening. And this evening, we're going to be talking about the Bermuda Library. First of all, I'd like to welcome our Minister of Education, the Honorable Diallo Rabain, JPMP. And from the Bermuda Library, we have with us tonight, Joanne Brangman, the Director of Library and Archives, Ms. Kanisha Shakir, Program Coordinator at the Bermuda National Library, and Ms. Cheryl Ann Griffin, former Literacy Coordinator at the Barclay Institute. We encourage our audience at home to please log on to all of our platforms, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, tell a friend, and certainly if you have any questions or comments, to please share them on either of those platforms. Minister, I'm going to hand it over to you. Uh, thank you, Laurel. And um, first, I want to say a happy new year to um, to those. This is our first episode for the new year. So happy new year, Bermuda. Um, I know things have been a bit trying here of late with the um, Omicron outbreak, but um, together we can get through what it is that is facing us. So as a nation, as long as we hold together, look out for each other and do the things that need to be done, we'll, we, we will be all right. Today, I'm excited to welcome the libraries uh, to this episode of Education Connection. The libraries provide an invaluable resource to not just our students and not just our children, but to our adults as well. And today we're going to talk about a wide array of services that the library gives our public um, with the director, uh, Ms. Brangman here, with her team. And they're going to talk about uh, some of these things that you may not know. Um, I know when I became minister and I met with uh, the various departments, talked about libraries, I was blown away with some of the things that the library does and what they do for the people of Bermuda. And so without further ado, I'm going to pass it over uh, to our guests so they can give you an introduction of what it is the Bermuda National Library system does and how it can be utilized for your benefit. And thank you, uh, Laurel, for that um, introduction. And I'll now pass it on to Ms. Prangman. My good evening, Minister, and good evening, Bermuda, and thank you, Minister, for allowing us to be here this evening and to share information about the library with the residents of our beautiful island. Um, I'm going to take this opportunity to give a, over, a, a quick and de uh, hopefully as detailed as possible overview of what the library provides some of the programs where we have coming up and hopefully some of you will tune in and ask questions and learn more about what we have to offer. First and foremost, the one thing I do have to get out to the public is that the main library, the adult library is going to be changing our hours. So as of next week, we will be closed on Mondays, which means the library will be open on Tuesday, Tuesday through Saturday and closed on Sundays and Mondays. You'll see the hours come across the bottom there, but we'll be open from Tuesday to Thursday, nine to five, Fridays, 10 to five, Saturdays, nine to five, and again, closed on Sundays and Mondays. But during the time that we were open, um, let's give you an idea of what we have to offer. First and foremost, I'm gonna talk about what we're doing right now, which is the Winter Reading Challenge, which is happening here at the Adult Library. It, the theme for the Winter Reading Challenge is cozy up with a good book and achieve your reading goals for 2022. It's very simple to join. You just contact the library. We can either email you a copy of the reading log. You can uh, sign on to our website, which is www.bnl.bm, and download a copy of the log, or um, pick it up from our Facebook page, or come in and get a copy. The reading challenge started on the 17th of January and will run until the 19th of March. So, and we have lots of, there are different categories that go along with the reading challenge. So you'll have to read six books during that period of time. And um, then you'll be eligible for various prizes at the end. 
Then there are also other activities that go along with the winter reading challenge. We have winter reading recipes so that if you come in and you pick up a copy of the recipe or you download it off of Facebook or our, our web website, then you will uh, just take a picture of it and show people. Well, Ms. Shakir, would you like to explain the, the recipe? <laughs> Sure. Good evening, everyone. Um, what we're trying to do is encourage people um, to check out our cookbooks, um, come in and see our displays at the library. Um, so what we have is the Winter Reading Challenge weekly recipe um, on display at the library where you can stop by, um, collect a recipe, um, or choose a, a recipe for one of our recipe books um, on the display. And um, we are encouraging people to well, our foodies to uh, to to cook these recipes and share their recipes on shows, social media, um, or they can send us uh, a photo um, of their of their the creation that they made on, uh, at library at gov.bm. In addition to that, uh, we have crossword puzzles and um, word search that you can come in and collect at the library. You can get it on our Facebook page. Um, you complete the crossword, you bring it into the library, um, you submit it, and then you can be eligible for our Winter Reading Challenge gift basket. Okay, thank you, Mrs. Shakir. I hope that Mrs. Smith, who's our youth librarian, would have been able to be here with us, but unfortunately she is traveling today, so she may still pop in before we finish and join us. But in the meantime, I can tell you the Youth Library is also doing a winter reading program. Theirs goes from January 4th until April 15th, and their theme is Take Out a Good Book. And the participation- I'm sorry, let me just, I'm sorry, let me just interrupt you. One more thing I forgot to mention. Um, we are doing a winter reading challenge uh, selfie um, competition, and we're uh, partnering with Novelty. There are neighbors in, um, uh, Parleville Park. Uh, so we're encouraging, we'll, more details will come in February, um, but we encourage people to um, take their selfies with their uh, book that they're check, they've checked out from the library or their ebook that they've downloaded from Libby and um, share their post on social media. But um, like I said, you can um, feel, we look for more details on our website at uh, bnl.bm. Um, and if you're following us on social media, you'll see information coming up in February for that as well. Thank you again. Um, so with the youth library, what you have to do is you go over and you pick up a card, go to youth library, pick up a card. It's a punch card and you'll re receive a star punch every time you check out a book. Um, after star punches, the you, the child will hand in their library card for a prize. And then there again, with the youth library, there are various activities that you can do that win you extra points. So again, stop by the youth library and pick up the card. Um, you can, it, again, it goes with, as with the adult library, it can be um, hardcover books, paperback books, e-books, um, e-movies, e-magazines, all of that is included in the winter reading program. And as we go through the evening, we'll explain to you how to get access to all of those, all those items. Another program that we're going to do is we are partnering and supporting the Barclay Institute in their community outreach program, which is One Island, One Book. And I'm going to ask Mrs. Griffin if she will explain One Island, One Book, the Barclay Institute Bermuda for us. Good evening and thank you. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the Bermuda Library for their support of the Barclay Institute in this venture. Uh, we are doing a project called One Island, One Book. It started with the Barclay Institute students and their study, their literacy study. Uh, they chose the book, the novel Girl Cut 
by Mrs. Florence Webb Maxwell. And the idea was to have the whole school, not just the students, but the staff and all, everyone on campus reading that book along with the students. Uh, the idea became so popular, then they decided, we all decided that it would be a great initiative to have the whole island reading Girl Cut. It was timely as next month is Black History Month. February is Black History Month. Um, it's by a, a, a local author who's very accessible. Um, very, and the Barclay Institute has always tried to connect, the English department has always tried to connect their curriculum with the history and the legacy of Bermuda. So the, the study of Girl Cut has come in very handy. Uh, we've extended it to, as I said, one island, one book, where we are aiming to have the whole island of Bermuda, as many people as possible who can get their hands on Girl Cut by Mrs. Florence Webb Maxwell to read along with the students of the Barclay Institute. We've set up a, a um, Facebook page because we are going to develop activities, not for the high school students, but for the community to be involved in reading the book. Um, and we're calling those activities, which will run the month of February through the month of March, we're calling it Barclay, Bermuda Reads with Barclay. And people can respond to all of the activities uh, that are placed on our Facebook page. Actually, you just gave me an idea when you were talking about recipes. I hadn't thought of developing a, an activity for recipes, but that's on my list now. Um, and you did mention something that we're aiming to do is that we're calling court reading, where people do take and submit photographs of themselves, reading the book or reading any book that has to be associated, that's associated with um, the history of Bermuda or a local author. We also are going to have activities just like you mentioned with your activity, crossword puzzles, words such, such as and such. Uh, the Bermuda Library, as I said, we're very happy for your support. The Book Mart has also supported us and they have a collection of books now and a, another collection should be coming in very, very soon so that as many people as possible who want to join in can get the book and join in with the, the reading. I don't know if I've left anything out, um, but one of the reasons Girl Cut was chosen, as I said, was because the timeliness of, of um, this month being, this coming month being February, uh, 1959 watershed event of the theater boycott. So it brings in the history of that watershed event. Uh, it's also very um, useful for discussion in things like resilience. We know that a lot of resilience was employed during the, the theater boycott of 1959. You know, imagination for young people and older people, I guess, self-discovery. So a, a book that's very timely, interesting to read, a page turner. I won't give away anything in it. Um, a lot of people will see themselves or see, or it, it brings back a lot of memories. So for discussion purposes, especially the older audience, I, I think it will stimulate a lot of discussion uh, in Bermuda. There's been a lot of support so far. Uh, some people are waiting and anxiously, and we hope to fulfill everybody's dreams of enjoying the whole island enjoying the one book all at once and um, having a great time around the enjoyment of reading. Thank you, Ms. Griffin. And what we will hope to have is an island-wide, the, the library is planning to host an island-wide book discussion. So 
Um, hopefully by the time we get around to having the discussion, we'll be able to have some events in-house, but this will it will be a hybrid event so that there will be some people in-house with Mrs. Maxwell. Um, and if we find a sponsor, maybe we can make it like the Oprah Winfrey Book Club and have dinner around the table with a few, <laughs> few people and Mrs. Maxwell and <laughs> everyone else join in via Zoom and we can have an interesting discussion. I'm, like, as you said, there are lots of people who will be able to see themselves or see people they know in the book, which will definitely be <laughs> lots of discussion. Yes. I, I, I'd like to add also that the particular activity Bermuda Reads with Barclay will last through February and March. And I, from March on, there will be several other activities planned through to May. Uh, one of them being, we're planning a May Fair based on the 50s uh, for the whole community to enjoy. Uh, students are gonna be involved in making some films and there will be a film festival in April. Uh, during March also, students will be able to engage with the members of the progressive group. And then the grand finale at the uh, May 7th, I think the date is, we will be having a banquet reception to honor Mrs. Maxwell as the author of Girl Cut. That's wonderful. Yes, in addition to that, um, the library um, would like to invite um, the members of the public to stop by and check out various artifacts and um, items that we have on display that um, Mrs. Maxwell has graciously um, uh, learned us. Um, we also have articles um, that you might want to sort of look through that we've uh, printed from our digital collection. Um, we have photographs of the progressive group and um, we'll have posters and other things. Um, all of this will be in the library in the Bermuda History and Cultural Studies Room. Wonderful. Thank Wonderful. You very thank much. you very much. Thank you for your support. Thank you. We appreciate you and thanks for the collaboration. Yes. We really appreciate it. One Island, One Book has been a dream of mine for a long time. So I'm glad to finally see it coming to fruition. So thank and you, I'm Mr. Sure, and I'm sure with the reception that we get, it will continue 2023, 2023, with a selection of another book, novel by a Bermudian author. Yes. Let's hope this is something we've kicked off that will continue for years to come. Yeah. Okay. Right. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Griffin. Okay. Right. Now, as we talk about the fact that this will be one island, one book, and we want everyone reading, this leads me into another service that the library provides, and it's our outreach services. The service has mainly been for senior citizens who are home, who are home or find it difficult to get into Hamilton to get to the library. So what we do is if you call in, we will bring the books to you. The service is available for seniors in their private homes, as well as we service the nursing homes who, who, wish, to, who wish to participate. Uh, so if anyone would like to borrow a copy of Girl Cut from the library and you can't get into the library, then we can come out and provide it to you. Um, as I said, the library is going to be closed on Mondays from here on out. Um, and that's one of the services that we'll be looking to provide to the public on Mondays is the outreach service that, so that we can expand that service more as more and more of our population are aging so we can get out to help you. Aside from our outreach services, we offer lots of online services. As Mrs. Shakira said, she just mentioned downloading, uh, printing copies of articles from our digital collection on the progressive group. The digital collection is a collection of the newspapers that we currently have online. We have Royal Gazette, we have the Bermuda Recorder, Bermuda Times, Bermuda Sport, Fame Magazine, um, Worker's Voice, Bermuda Beacon, Bermuda Life and Times, and EastEnders. Uh, we do not currently have the Bermuda Sun or Mid-Ocean, but that 
hopefully one day will be able to be added to our collection. Uh, the Royal Gazettes currently go from 1784, and we've just recently upped it to, so extended it, so it now goes to 1969. So there's an interesting, an interesting period there, and hopefully by the end of next year, we can be up into the 70s and get through the whole riots and all the tumultuous periods in Bermuda history. So it's a, it's a valuable resource. Um, Ms. Bregman, can I um, just add something really sure. quickly? Um, we know that some people may not be um, comfortable using the digital collection or may not know how to use it. Um, we have a member of staff on, on hand. Um, our local studies librarian, Ms. Allen Hollis, um, is willing to give one-on-one -on -one, um, uh, help, one -on -one, willing to provide one-on-one -on -one sessions uh, for people who want to learn more about how to use the digital collection. Um, in order to contact Ms. Hollis, you can email her at ejhollis at gov.bm, or you can call the library at 295-2905. Um, and we can arrange for you to do a, a, a Zoom session with Ms. Hollis just to get some more information about the digital collection and how to use it. Um, we find a lot of people using it for uh, genealogy, um, people wanting to look up um, for, you know, for students for research. So this is an amazing tool that we have and we hope that yeah. you can utilize it. Yeah, and amazing it is, so particularly if you're doing genealogy. I mean, you can put in your surname or name of one of your ancestors and if it their name ever appeared in the royal gazette it will pop up and it will give you highlight where their name is in that particular newspaper so that you can read what was happening uh, to them or by them at that time one of the things that i'm going to put a call out for because i do this at every opportunity i can the, the collection that we have gaps in is the Bermuda Recorder. Um, if you look on our website and you go to the digital, digital collection, you'll see that there's a list saying which Bermuda recorders were missing. So if anyone has any recorders anywhere in their house that they've been saving, um, we would love to be able to borrow them from you so that we could digitize those and um, fill in the gaps in our collection. So uh, that's the digital collection. Some of the, we also talked about the eBooks, e-magazines um, that can be accessed online. You can use, we have an app that's called Libby that can be downloaded from Google Play or um, the Play, Google Play or um, the App Store. Um, they, Libby then allows you to have access to our collection of ebooks. Um, we have ebooks, e magazines. Um, it also, Libby gives you access to something called Universal Class, which is a collection of university classes where you can, if you choose, you can get university credit for. All of this is available to you free of charge. All you need to have is your library card. And once again, one thing we didn't point out, your library card is free. This is a service provided by Bermuda government free of charge to anyone who wants to take advantage of it. You can um, either come to the library for your library card or you can visit our website, www.bnl.bm um, and you can get an online membership there as well to access um, Libby and our other online services. Yes. Um, there are a couple of other ebook services that we have. One is called Freeding. Um, there's EBSCOhost that allows you access to not only ebooks but research databases. So if anybody's doing research, kids doing projects, you have access to all of that again, free of charge. Um, we also offer some streaming videos through a service called Canopy. Again, you um, just you you can download the Canopy app. It will ask you for your library. Um, you just go through the process to add it to your device, and it then gives you access to documentaries, um, children's videos. 
you're allowed, uh, I think it's 10 credits per month. Each video has a different uh, a number of credits that it will take to borrow. Um, that will, once you've reached that 10 credits for the month, you'll have to wait for the next month, except for the children's videos. The children's videos are available, they're free. No credits are, are needed for the children's videos. So you can access those whenever you like. Um, then we also have something called Bermudians travel a lot. So we have another service called Mango Languages. Mango, again, you can either access through our website or you could download the Mango app. It has 72 different languages. So 12 of those are for non-English speakers who want to learn English. So it has English for Sp French speakers, English for German speakers, English for Spanish speakers. So you could learn English. Um, and our guest workers who wanted to learn English could learn English using Mango. Um, we, but for Bermudians, if you want to brush up on your Portuguese, if you, if you are traveling to Russia and you decide you want to learn Russian, mm -hmm. it's all available free of charge via the library website or again the mango app and again you'll only have to put in the library put in your library card number and you have access another service we have we have a tutoring tutoring service via tutor.com now this is allows free live tutors they are mostly out of the us of course um it is available from 8.30 a.m. until midnight every day. It covers all ages from kindergarten to college. It all, they also provide a service for um, adults. If you want to do your GED, um, you just want to brush up on some subjects that you might have missed out on. You just have an interest. Um, it also for adults, it, job seekers, if you need help writing a resume, writing a cover letter, you want to brush up on Microsoft Office, you need to learn Word or Excel or PowerPoint. All of this is available through tutor.com. Tutor um, and the tutor.com is also this, for this month, they're starting their, let's see, um, becoming a confident writer. Thanks. <laughs> yes, it's yeah. um, actually tomorrow uh, at 1 p.m. Um, if you're interested in um, attending, it's a, a free webinar. You can either uh, follow us on social media. I'm, I'm sorry, follow tutor.com on social media and click um, the link in their bio. Or you can email us at library at gov.bm and we can send you the link. But again, this is tomorrow um, at at, at 1 p.m. PM. Yeah. It's um, yeah, on the poster, it says, uh, if you check our, our um, Instagram page, it says uh, 12 p.m. Um, Eastern, but we want people to understand that, um, you know, we're on um, we're in a diff different time zone. So we'll start at 1 p.m. Bermuda time. Okay. Um, now, do you want to talk about some of the other programs we have? events that we have coming up? Sure. Sorry, just give me one minute. Um, the first event that we have coming up um, in February, um, we uh, will be collaborating with a local author. Her name is Brooklyn Knight. I'm not sure if, um, if you're familiar with her, but she's a, a very popular romance author um, in Bermuda. Um, she's also a publisher. So um, we thought that for the month of romance for um, pre-Valentine's, if people were interested in, um, you know, having a book talk and uh, just having a listen to one of our local authors um, and also supporting supporting her and, and purchasing our book, um, we think you really enjoy the, um, the evening. This will be done via Zoom. It's gonna be online. Um, details to follow, um, if you follow us, um, we'll have information um, next week 
um, in, in regards to um, this upcoming event. So we can send you the Zoom link um, and you can learn more about her journey um, as a romance author, um, you know, what she does in regards to publishing and find out more about her hot and steamy books. <laughs> The next event that we have, oh, I'm sorry, and that um, again is Thursday, February 10th at 6 p.m. via Zoom. Uh, the next event that we have in February um, will be with uh, Margaret Gillis. She was um, at the library just um, Saturday uh, promoting her book, um, Who's Your Daddy? 12 Steps to Rescue the Next Generation from Father Absence Syndrome. Um, so we we really wanted to have an event where she was in-house if people wanted to be um, to sort of meet her, um, you know, get a book signed um, and hear more about her book. Um, we we decided to um, invite Ms. Gillard to do another signing at the library. Um, and that will be Thursday, February 24th. In addition to her book signing and book discussion, she is also going to uh, do a short, um, show a short video clip. Um, so that will be, take place as well. So if you're not able to join us in person, uh, we'll, it'll also uh, be available on Zoom as well. And um, in addition, um, we will in, um, March, we will have uh, yoga classes with Miss Latoya Bridgewater. Um, more details will follow um, due to our current climate. Um, yoga in the library is is um, not possible, but we hope to start our classes in March. We're also reaching out to the public and asking that if anyone is interested in offering their providing, you know, offering their services um, to our library patrons. Um, if you want to teach people how to knit or, um, you know, offer computer classes, uh, we really uh, appreciate it if you could reach out to us as um, we want to offer more community classes at the library. So feel free to reach out to us if you want to, um, you know, teach teach our members of the public. You can reach out to us at um, library at gov.bm or you can email me directly at kashakir at gov.bm. And I think that's it for me, Ms. Bringman, in regards to um, events. You know, there's only one more that we, we have to mention um, that to help people get through the month of February. If you don't have a date for Valentine today, what we're doing is blind date with a book. <laughs> <laughs> so so um, you the concept is you come in, the book is wrapped in very pretty Valentine's paper, and it'll have a little blurb on the front, but you won't have any idea what the book is until you get home and, and unwrap the book. <laughs> so that's blind date with a book. So to help the, those of you who might be alone and get through Valentine's Day and hopefully put a smile on your face, you could relax with a glass of wine and a book or maybe a, glass, a cup of tea and a cup book. of tea. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so visit us here at the adult library for blind date with a book. Um, so unfortunately, Mrs. Smith hasn't been able to join us yet. So I'm just going to give just a brief outline of some of the activities at the youth library. Um, again, COVID pending, one of the events that they have coming up is Pajama Rama, which is currently planned for February 19th. But we will, again, we'll have to see how, how COVID goes, but um, we will provide more information on that. Um, the library had, youth library has their STEAM club and their activities resume this week. And you can, again, they're not meeting in-house, but they, the STEAM kits are available for you to pick up from the youth library. And it's an activity that young people can do at home um, and teach them about science, technology, and the STEAM event. Um, they have also coming up, 
as uh, the story times are going to be uh, resuming hopefully th this month. Um, so story times for three to seven year olds on Saturdays from 1030 to 11. Um, girls club also meets on Saturdays from 11 to one and that's for girls aged nine to 14. The chess club is for seven and up is on Saturdays at the youth club at the youth library and it is from 3 to 5 p.m. You have a teen advisory board. So if you you have students who need community service hours, the youth library has a teen advisory board that plans activities for young people. And that is for teenagers aged 13 to 18. Um, we did have a book babies program, but book babies at the moment is is still suspended, but hopefully, again, pending COVID, um, hopefully book babies can start again soon. So that's that's it for us. So now, if we anyone has any questions, we wow, Miss Brangman, that was tonight. comprehensive. I learned so much. Tonight, oh, well, what's it ever? Um, free all kinds of opportunities, and more importantly, opportunities for us to just engage with each other, learn more about ourselves, and just um, learn new things. So, thank you to Miss Shakira, Miss Brangman, in her absence, Miss Griffins. I did get wind of the girl club um, um, book initiative, and I was like, I have that book in him, and no, I haven't started it soon. I think it might be a good time. It might take me to the end of March, but hey, let's see if we, we don't have uh, questions. I'm looking. Someone did ask if we can post the website. So I don't know if um, Omar is able to do that. Oh, yes, he's done that. Oh, so yes. The he's website got is. It. He's got it. I'm at there. The bottom. Yes. Okay, Minister, did you have any questions for them? Well, uh, this was such a comprehensive presentation. As, as I stated earlier, when I first met with the library becoming minister, what blew me away was the amount of um, activities that the Bermuda Library has. That that is that this is an this is a gem that people just don't know about, and they really need to understand some of the things that's going on there. So when we heard the group talk about things like the Mango program, the Mango language app, you know, you think about it. You know, when, when you look on, you know, and I know all of us get online and you see what what comes up, Babel. That you know, where they're trying to advertise uh, that 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 language app that that you have to purchase. Here we have all you got to do is join the Bermuda Library, which is of no cost to you in order to get access to 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 that sort of that to to that sort of services. The Tutor.com program, it's free. It tutors, and you heard all of the services that it, that it promotes. You got services that go from kindergarten all the way to college. Students, if you're if you're having difficulty with a, with a topic, log on to tutor.com. Use your library card and get free tutoring online. And, and all students are now, um, you know, um, pretty much well versed on what they can do online. But it doesn't stop there. You got the adult program, the adult program, resume writing cover page writing, our software programs, as uh, Ms. Brangman pointed out, these are the wonderful things that are happening at this library. And I know we're supposed to be talking about questions, but you know, I just want to reinforce to, to, to the Bermudian public what it is that our library can do. I mean, uh, you know, all you have to do is, is join the library, get your library card, and you have access to all of these things. Um, you know, I, I listened intently as, as we talked about some of the things that they're going to have during February, uh, Brooklyn mm -hmm. Night. Uh, local romance author is going to be there on February 10th. Um, go out and support our local our local authors. Go out and uh, purchase the book. Get it signed. You know, uh, I I, I kind of chuckled, uh, Ms. Brangman, when you talked about the uh, blind date with a book and the book wrapped in Valentine's Day paper. <laughs> and so you have no idea what you get when you unwrap. But you know that that, that might be something pe people will go for. And, and you know, mm -hmm. I'd encourage you to get there, you know. Um, this is a and this is a book that actually I've heard about and I really want to check out. So you probably will see me down there on February 24th when Margaret Gillum comes um, with her book Who's Your Daddy? Rescue the Next Generation from the Fatherless Syndrome. You know, um, it, it is it is it is a topic that is that is um, that is amongst us whether we want to 
um, acknowledge it or not. And it's something that we definitely um, need to do. Uh, they need to do a little bit more time on, uh, you know, and, and I, I am disappointed that we aren't able to have uh, Ms. Smith on. I know I've known um, uh, Mala for a long, long time. Me and me and Ms. Smith worked at the, at the um, youth center on Angle Street together uh, back in, I, I won't say back, but it, it's, it was a while ago and I, that was before I even went to university. But so I've known her for a long, long time. And I know some of the things, cause I was involved with the youth library in, um, in, in, in the chess club at one point, in the reading club at one point. So I know the valuable service that that particular um, entity does for our youth. And I'm so happy to know that we're still doing those things. We're still doing the story times. We're still got the girls club going. We still got the chess club going. Um, I, I was quite interested in the steam club. I've heard about it, but I, I hadn't. I, I didn't know much about it. So thank you for um, um, bringing that forward. A question I did. A question I had personally is: um, Is there any cost for the steam kits uh, for for students? No, there's no uh, cost for the steam. I think Ms. Brangman dropped off. We're trying to bring her back now. Okay. Um, but um, at, at one point, the, the STEAM Club met um, at the library. Um, currently, that's not happening. But what you can do is collect the STEAM kit um, at the youth library and take your activity mm -hmm. home and, and, and uh, do it that way. And okay. is, what are the, the, what are the, the youth library? Stuff? Sorry. Say that again, sorry. I was just asking, was the STEAM kit, that's from the youth library again. I from the youth library, library, yes, just from the youth library. library. Okay. okay. Yes. Yeah, and I was just curious to know what, um, what I, the age I, is. The I think the age is like seven and up. Seven and up. And so it's something, um, those of you that are out there listening, please take advantage of, of these things. You know, um, I love this and I did not know it existed, Ms. Brangman, and we got to figure out a way to promote this more. The Teen Advisory Board that plan that uh, plans activities for, uh, you know, teens looking for community service, because that's one thing that we do here in the COVID era. You know, how can my teen get the community service that's required to graduate from senior school? And we hear it so often. And, you know, I said there are ways to do that and thinking outside the box, you know, uh, but I'm glad to see that there is an entity there. And uh, it'll be something that I'll reach out to you um, yeah. personally, find out some more information about. And yeah. hopefully we can promote that, especially at our senior level. Yeah. And one of the major activities for anybody out there that the Teen Advisory Board organizes is the haunted library the, the halloween event mm -hmm. at the youth library and the and teen the advisory board well, is basically right? sorry and the seniors tea as well oh, and oh yeah i don't know if they're doing seniors tea this year we must check they yeah, usually yeah. do a seniors tea at valentine's day um so uh but that is the haunted library is the event that everybody loves because they and they do an amazing job. I, the teenagers change, but the, the they transform that library into the most frightening place. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We also so. forgot to mention uh, Bermudian, um, I'm sorry, Caribbean literature. Um, ah, with Dr. Now, Barry. Bermudian literature with Dr. Angela Barry. Wow. Um, she's one of our jams uh, and we, mm -hmm. Um, we had a session uh, last Module year in 2021. Yes, and it wow. went really well. Um, it was some participants were in house, and others were in Zoom. So um, that was great. And in, in that, if you couldn't sort of come to the library, you could participate via Zoom. We had um, Barclay Institute teachers um, present. We were really excited that they um, felt the need to come and learn more about our Caribbean and Bermudian um, literature and share it with their students. We have representatives from the archives, from the library, uh, uh, politicians. We just had people of all walks of life. So we will be offering classes again in May with Dr. Angela Barry. So we're encouraging people to just stay tuned and find out more about, about those classes. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. Um, Ms. Brangman, there's there's one one thing, uh, sort of a, a little, what, what we call when we're having our, our discussions, a bird walk. And um, I know that you were you you attended one of the meetings. Um, we we recently formed the historical legacy committee um, that has been charged with looking at the history of education in Bermuda and 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 um, compiling um, ideas and and making suggestions on how we can preserve and not only preserve but display uh, the history of, of education in Bermuda. And I I know um, they they had a conversation with you, and so I just want to use this time as a plug to. Um, ask anyone out there if they have 
any any old school yearbooks, any old school year um, newsletters, uh, PTA books, um, photographs, or anything that that um, talks about what happened within any of our schools for you know as far back as you can remember. Um, please um, make sure. Please don't hesitate to reach out to the Bermuda Library to arrange um, to to um, drop those off to us. Um, I don't, I'm not sure if you can uh, say what would happen with that. Will we make copies of it um, and get it back it, to them or, or anything? It would, it would depend on, on um, whether they wanted to donate it to us or if they wanted to lend it to us and we digitize it. Um, we okay. recently had someone donate a whole slew of programs from the debutantes ball so you know so if you were ever a debutante and, and you still have your old program um i'm not sure which years we're missing but you could let us know and what you have and then we can add so that we can have a comprehensive collection of debutantes bowls programs we do have a few school yearbooks so yes if you have yearbooks that would be invaluable um, between the library and the archives, we're going to try and do our best to support the the committee to in their research um, to see what we can put together. It, it is going to take a lot of work because even though we know a lot of stuff about the schools and history of the schools, a lot of it isn't written down. Um, exactly. So this is this is a point where we really want to be able to get. The history of education in Bermuda in print. Right. Thank, thank you very much for that, um, guys. I know um, we've we've kept you um, long enough, and people have tuned in. I was why I, when we do this, I also monitor Facebook and the rest of them just to see mm -hmm. who's logging in. And um, you know, th this is some invaluable information that you've given today, and I do want to take this opportunity to thank both you, Ms. Brangman, both you, Ms. Shakur, and um, Cheryl, uh, for for tuning in and giving us this update. Um, we'll reach the top of the hour, uh, Laurel, and so I'll hand it to you to take us away. Absolutely, Minister. Thank you so much, Minister, again, for um, having Education Connection and bringing along with you our friends from the library, Ms. Brangman and Ms. Shakir. Ms. Griffin, I know, has already fallen off. Brilliant information tonight, extremely informative. Certainly, if anyone missed the beginning, the replay is always available on Facebook or YouTube. So go back and find out what's out there in the library. We really thank everybody for tuning in. Minister, thank you again, and we wish everyone an awesome night. Everyone, take care. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. Have a good evening. Thank you. Thanks for the opportunity. We appreciate it. No problem.